On today's episode, we're answering the question, no, we're not, because I'm on the wrong damn outline. So, um, so first step to monetizing your podcast is knowing that you can way before the gurus say you can. And I think this is what happened when I first got into podcasting. Um, I actually started a live stream show, started it. People started watching like like a thousand people every week would like watch our show. And I was like freaking out. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Uh, and then it turned into work. And then I was like, oh, there's a lot of work. Like, how do we make some money? And so I started down this rabbit trail of like trying to figure out like, how do I monetize? How do I make money with my show? And every every podcast I listened to about monetization, every article I read, every blog, every video I watched was all like, yeah, you get to have 10,000 downloads an episode before you can make any money because you got to charge a small fee per 1,000 downloads, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, there's no way this is ever going to work out for me. Um, so that was my first show. So I actually monetized it by selling it. So I sold my half to my co-host because uh, we couldn't agree on how to monetize it. And so uh, then I started another show and I monetized that show through networking. So it was a, a show really just based on business. And I would talk to other business owners and I owned a screen printing promotions company at the time. So that was all just networking relationship and then people go, oh, you podcast full time? I'm like, dude, I wish, but I print T-shirts and promotional items. And then I would, they, you know, it'd be a network. So then they'd be like, oh man, well you help me out, you promote my business. Now I'm gonna, you know, help you out promote your business. Uh, then fast forward to the pandemic, all that went away. T-shirt business went away because I helped nonprofits build product tables. Big, big audiences went to no audiences, and Billy's business went to no business. And then I just had to retool and think like, okay, what am I going to do? And it was really in that moment of sitting at my desk for 30 days, thousands and thousands of dollars of canceled orders that I just had to really be honest with myself and my family and say, what do you, what do you want to do, man? Like now is the reset button. The world has hit the reset button. What do you want to do when you grow up? And it was, I want to make content. And I'd been fooling around with content for a couple of years, but I didn't know how to make a living from it. And so I decided that moment, like, I'm just going to do whatever I want. I'm going to break every rule, every blog, every article, every person who says I need a certain amount of audience. I'm just not going to listen to them. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to do something different. And so a friend of mine and I started a fishing podcast and we said, okay, we're going to do four episodes and then we're going to go pitch sponsors. And so that's what we did. We did four episodes. We had 400 total downloads, which was still amazing, by the way, like a hundred people listening to your shows like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Um, so we realized like niche matters. So we niched down to the coast of North Carolina, saltwater. If it doesn't live in the salt, we don't talk about it inshore, offshore, near shore. And we interview guides along the coast of North Carolina. And so I went out and basically started talking to sponsors and said, look, I don't have a huge audience, but I have the right audience. And that was what really where this became a thing of mine for podcasters was you don't have to have the biggest audience, but you have to have a pure audience. So if I can go and say, hey, sure, you can put a billboard up that no one looks at because they're all staring at their cell phone at the red light and hope someone calls you, or I have all these people that are your target audience listening to my voice who trust me, know me, like me, and trust me And w after four weeks, but will continue to do that for the next X amount of years. And I think that was the moment where you know, I had this epiphany kind of like, man, I don't have to have a ginormous following i just have to have the right people and and build this tr this relationship like be the middle person for this relationship between you know sponsor and listener or sponsor and watcher and so that was that was really my first deal was a ten thousand plus dollar sponsorship deal uh because we found the right sponsor for our show and they've been with us for 115 episodes so yeah that was my first way of doing a couple monetization things I was taking some notes because you're right. You don't need a huge audience if you have the right audience. And I'm going to dive into what little I know about the world of fishing for a second, because it's not just that they're super niched in. It's that they are, and I say this with love, they are rabid when it comes to purchasing fishing stuff i almost said junk because but it's not junk it's stuff <laughs> it's it's hooks and it's lines and it's boats yeah. and it's gear and it's boxes and it's 
I don't know. That's all I got. I, I think I've yeah. fished once in my life. But so what if your audience isn't as rabid as fishers or golfers? I'm trying to think or um, dog people, you know, the ones I'm talking about, right? Like they are, they will buy anything if it's got their thing on it. Mm-hmm. What if your audience isn't like that? Can you still get away with that smaller audience? Yeah, absolutely. And, well, and I think the funny thing that you just said for somebody who hasn't started a podcast that is looking to start one, uh, go drive around town and see what retail stores are around because everything you just mentioned, fishing, golf, uh, sports, whatever, like those all have retail shops. And so, you know, if companies are putting the money in and the energy to build a store, then that's going to be a big enough niche for you to really target and go after. Um, but I think it's, I think it's more, like I said, about the purity of the audience in everyone's different. The, so the podcast industry may not be the biggest industry, but I make money through sponsorships through it because it's still valuable because those people are still spending money. They're still using services. It's still an industry. It's still a market. So I think, you know, in the fishing world, I'm, I may just have a bigger scalability than some other podcasters, but I think that the purity of the audience still matters. And it's really knowing your audience. You know, I talked to so many creators that are like, yeah, yeah, I want to make money on my cool what your podcast about. Oh, anything, man. I'll, if you got a story, I'll tell it. And I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. But who is it for? Like, who are you trying to inspire? Who are you trying to help? Who are you trying to serve? And they're like, everybody. And I'm like, that doesn't work. Like, no business in the world that is successful serves everybody because it's just impossible. Like, it's just impossible. And it's cool to have multiple layers of revenue streams, but you got to figure out who that target is. And so uh, I'm not, I think any of these targets will work because I've monetized very small audiences through the knowledge of podcasting and, you know, sponsorship through podcasting and live streaming uh, services, all that kind of stuff. I've had those companies write me checks because they understood, like, yeah, you might not have 10,000 of those people, but the two, 300 that you have are very valuable. And those are, you know, if they transact, then they're going to be a decent amount of revenue for our company every single, you know, month, week, year, whatever that looks like. So, so I think it's really about knowing your, you knowing your audience and knowing the needs of that audience and matching the sponsor with that audience. I think this is the biggest mistake that I see. And really, actually, really annoying. Actually, if I'm gonna be honest, I'm listening to a true crime podcast. I'm into it. Not that I mean, I guess what do you sell steak knives or something? But but I'm into it, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, this purple mattress. And then you're like, okay, this is like this. This took me completely out of the storyline. And so for our fishing show, we keep it in the fishing world. We keep it about what fishing is. You know, fishermen and anglers are interested in. And I've had plenty of opportunity to sell. Uh, sponsorship spots to stuff that just makes zero sense for our show but i don't want it to be a, de- a deterrent i want that content to con- to seamlessly flow and be a part of our episode um so yeah it's knowing your audience and knowing those brands that can serve them really really well and i think the tighter that is the longer that that relationship lasts hold on no. <laughs> because okay so here's the thing so apparently I start every episode with okay so but Jenny called me out on it. Oh and no, now, now it's awkward. <laughs> now I don't want to do it, but it screws me up because I don't know how to get into the flow without my okay so. Yeah. 